Did you see it? He made it. The $486,000 Cessna 172 flew all the way from California to Hawaii, 18 hours of flying time in a special one-time ferry flight to get that aircraft over to a flight school where it is desperately needed to be pressed into training. November 490 November Whiskey was featured on this channel just last November when Sven brought it by to show all of us this new aircraft. How did they do that? My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel from the London affiliate office located somewhere north of Hyde Park. Let's check it out. Remember our friend Sven, the uh, Cesta salesman from Alaska? He sent me a text just before I departed New York for London here with the link to the FlightAware track of the, of the aircraft. And when I landed here at London some seven hours later, the 172 was just 45 minutes from landing at Honolulu. He made it. The stock modern Cessna 172 powered by the IO360 Lycoming engine has about 53 gallons of fuel on board and has a maximum as a useful load of about 878 pounds giving it a stock range of about 640 nautical miles or about 736 miles. So how do they tank these aircraft up for these long range ferry flights? Well, <clears throat> there's specialty companies like Air Mods Flight Center that do FAA approved fuel tank installations in these small aircraft for these long haul flights. So if he's got, if you look at the numbers, if he's got 53 gallons of fuel on board, Sven said they tanked up this engine for 20 hours of flying. 20 hours of flying at eight gallons an hour is about 160 gallons. 160 gallons at six gallons per hour is about 960 pounds worth of fuel. Plus you got the weight of the pilot and his equipment and his poopy suit which is going to bring uh, the total load up to about 1,200 pounds. Well, remember the empty weight was uh, 800, or the useful load was 878 pounds, so he's about 300 pounds over gross weight. So this is a special one-time FAA-approved ferry flight using these modifications to get these aircraft these long-range distances. So Air Mods typically uses a plywood box and a rigid tank mounted inside the plywood box with redundant dual fuel boost pumps to move that fuel either directly to the engine or into the uh, fuel, the regular wing tank fuel system. Here's another picture of the modification and on top of that fuel tank you'll see an HF radio to help provide long range communications for the ferry flight. These flights are typically flown by ferry pilots that specialize in long range flying like my friend Sarah here at Full Throttle Aviation in her, in her bright red poopy suit. These pilots wear an exposure suit. Poopy suit is a term from the Air Force days. These are exposure suits. They wear these the, the whole time they're flying plus a uh, inflatable life vest around their neck. These flight plans are very specially planned and the unique problem with the flight to Hawaii is that it's 2,500 miles with no suitable alternate. I've flown this route quite a bit in the airlines. And on this flight, this aircraft flew this route at just 10,000 feet. That's about the optimum altitude for a naturally aspirated Cessna 172. So he's not on oxygen the whole time. And he's getting about his best fuel economy and speed out of the aircraft at that altitude. But he's well below all the airline traffic. And if you look at the route, if we zoom in here, there is a series of airways that traverse between California and Hawaii, and they're labeled A, B, and C, and beyond. And it looks like this particular pilot flew the C route, which gives you, in the end, a basically a great circle route to Hawaii. So you need to flight plan this with no suitable alternate, what do you do? How do you flight plan that? Well, you've got to develop an equal time point, not an equal distant point, but an equal time point based on the winds, at which point you need to make sure you have a minimum amount of fuel to continue the flight. If you do not have that minimum amount of fuel at your equal time point, you got to turn all the way around and go back to your origination station. What do these pilots do once they, for communication, once you leave the radar environment of the coast, you are in a non-radar environment and you need to provide position reports at each of those positions. 
this, these position reports are typically done on a HF radio. So if you have that spare HF or high frequency radio, you can get a hold of the operator who can then transmit that data to ATC and double check your ADSB data across, across the ocean. The Cessna, of course, has the two VHF radios and an autopilot. And when we're crossing the oceans in the airliners, we have guard up in Victor 1, 121.5. And in the number two radio, we have what we call fingers or the frequency 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. On that frequency, we can chat amongst ourselves, all those within VHF radio range about the conditions ahead, ball game scores. No, you're not supposed to be talking about that. And at this point, this is a frequency that this uh, Cessna 172 can use to chat with airliners that are passing overhead. So there's a backup system for that aircraft to be able to communicate his position if in the event he's unable to get a hold of anybody or does not have an HF radio, but he should have an HF radio. Another option is a portable sat phone. Uh, we all have sat satellite data link capability in the airliners and we can always use that as a backup means of getting a hold of somebody to tell our position. So congratulations to the pilot of November 490 November Whiskey for another successful flight all the way across the Pacific Ocean. 18 hours of flying time in the Cessna 172. These flights, while very specialized, flown by specialized pilots under special authorization from the FAA, are fairly common. Uh, sometimes they don't go as planned, but they usually do, and it's usually much more cost effective than taking the aircraft apart, risking damaging it, putting it in a container ship, and floating it all the way across the ocean and reassembling it on the other end. That's how these small aircraft get moved around, especially the newer aircraft, and these new 172s, you know, the price of these is up over a half a million dollars now for inflation. Cessna can't keep up with demand and production because they are so desperately needed in flying schools all around the world to train the pilots to help solve the pilot shortage. Thanks so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here. I understand there's a canal with some barges down here, and one of those barges has a... Uh, pub on it. I'm going to go check it out.